Hi, my name's Nick uh, from the Blaking of Bonsai and Garden Centre and today I'll be shaping this nice little Japanese white pine so Pinus parviflora, I believe Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, have a look at the root system the Nabari So we take away all this old stuff I want to see what sort of surface roots this plant has we'll Try find the front of the tree Don't need expensive tools for this, a fork will do. You can buy a Japanese rake if you want to. I don't think it's necessary myself, but it's always nice to work with good tools. So this tree, there's some roots coming out the bottom of the pot. It's a nice phytophora here, I think it's called. Uh, indicates a healthy root system. We'll cut those away later and uh, possibly put a bit of new soil in this pot in the bottom. We'll keep it in this big pot over the winter though. Repot next year into a, a bonsai training pot. So, Alright, so I've raised it up in the pot a little bit. Some uh, mix in the bottom break the way. So I found this nice root here. It doesn't have much of a great nabari, but I'm sure underneath all this stuff we'll find some bigger surface roots in the future. I'm going to leave the roots alone for now. Uh, the next thing I'll, I usually do, take away all the little stuff like this. Just get rid of all the, all the junk. And uh, decide on which branch to keep in these sections here where you have three branches coming from the one place. We usually just want to keep one of those branches. So, get rid of all the riffraff to start with. And then we take care of these, what are known as the bar branches, because they're like a bar going through the tree. So usually, young pine trees will grow in whirls like this. And we need to choose one branch. Sometimes I like to wire the entire tree first before I decide. Sometimes I'll just take branches as I feel necessary. So it can be a long process with uh, varied techniques applied to it. We'll see. Okay, so we can start by clipping away any of these branches that are growing towards the inside. I think we're going to keep all of these trunks. So we clip. We leave a little stub, we can use that as a, uh, a gin later, a dead branch. We keep all of these to propagate, so very useful, very cool. Alright, uh, any weak looking stuff like this, can go, take that one right in. So, we can leave the smaller branches going in, they might come in handy to wire, bring out a little bit afterwards. So, when we have a group of branches like this, I'd be inclined, since this is a lower branch, to take out the smaller one here. Near this lower stuff here. Take them off. We want to keep the large branches at the bottom, generally. There's always exceptions to every rule this tree. I think I'll, I'll go with that. Take this one away as well. So we always leave these little stubs because with them we can take the, the bark off and create a nice looking gin. So we have this bar branching at the bottom here. I think even though this is a larger branch We'll probably keep this one because it's on the outside of the tree and give the tree a better silhouette. Now, bar branching towards the top of the tree is generally a bit more acceptable. It's not so bad. You can take some up, have some facing downwards. It can look quite attractive. Um, 
the way we have here, we want this branch and then we'll keep this one. So this one can go. And uh, yeah, I'll leave the little stub there as well. See how we go with that. So. It's going to be quite a large area here without any branches. So we're going to try and put some nice bends in to the trunk. The next stage is to wire. So I'll be doing that in a minute. That's enough of a trim for me for now. Uh, we'll apply some thick wire first, and then the thinner wire out to the branches. So we always start with that thick wire. When we wire, it's good to have wire of all different thicknesses. It's expensive, but if you can get it, it's the best. I'm just using uh, aluminium wire for this. We use copper wire for show plants, obviously. Looks a lot nicer, so you have many different thicknesses here. Uh, when we do wire the uh, the large area of the tree, the trunks and the thick branches, it's best to put your wire, anchor it quite deeply into the soil, as deep as you can. We want to maintain a paper thin gap between the wire and the tree, so I don't want to put it on super tight. It's not a good idea. We, uh, we don't want it too loose either, otherwise it's ineffective. There's many videos and books on wiring. You should take pride in your wiring, have a good technique. Otherwise your tree will end up looking messy. And that's the last thing you want in bonsai, is the tree to look messy. The purpose is for beauty, like most art. So we try to maintain a 45 degree angle. It's never perfect, you can always do a better job. But we're only human, so... We also have to be careful not to break branches as we wire. So often happens. It's uh, no good when you break a branch that you want to keep. Now I have a habit of shaping as I go. I haven't finished wiring the entire plant yet. But uh, I've got the main trunks down as neatly as possible. There's a little bit of crossing of the wires in a few very busy areas. It's something you want to try and avoid. So we generally try and uh, not cross the wires. Uh, as you can see, I've got a lot of movement in the trunks. This one coming down and going back up again. So it's important to have lots of curves. Uh, no long straight areas. Keep it interesting. And to intensify the curves as, as we go up. So I'm just going to finish uh, the fine wiring and uh, we'll see what we come up with. It's important to try and get out to all of these tips here so we can bend them all up like this. Uh, you want the needles facing upwards not hanging down on the pine trees. So after just three hours of shaping, this is what we've come up with. As you can see all the trunks have been bent quite a lot. It's been wired from the base to the tips. All the needles are wired pointing upwards. 
I've missed a couple. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the result. This is my first uh, Japanese white pine tree. We can't grow this kind of thing in Australia, so I'm very happy to be in Sweden and be able to work with all the species I've been reading about for years. So, Japanese white pine, finished. Uh, this will be worked on obviously over the next few years and refined constantly. We have to take the wire off and put it back on, keep it trimmed, uh, hopefully put it into a nice new pot next year, something quite shallow. We'll see. We might have to put it in a training pot first. So hopefully I can commission a gramming pot for this one. Anyway, thanks for watching.